Welcome back. Let's continue with mutual funds. First, we're going to take a look at the different kinds of risk associated with investing in mutual funds. Uh, since mutual funds is just a um, collection of stocks or bonds under its management, the risk of the mutual fund ultimately depends on the underlying stocks and bonds. And that has to do with the investment strategy that the fund employs. So we'll just use a general rule of thumb. Here are, is a way of to rank mutual funds from the lowest risk to the highest risk. Uh, the lowest risk will be money market fund. We mentioned those. These tend to invest in T-bills or corporate repos, very short term, uh, one to three months, less than six months. So they are very low risk. Uh, the next will be intermediate term bond funds. Um, when it comes to bond funds, the lowest risk is treasury and then uh, agency and then municipal bonds. And then the highest risk will be corporate bonds. Uh, Long-term bond funds tend to focus on, um, again, either corporate bond or treasuries. Similar to you have now have an understanding of bonds, you know that um, treasuries will have the lowest risk. High yield bond funds invest in bonds that have very low bond rating. So these are speculative uh, or junk bonds. Um, and then stock income fund, stock index funds. Um, and then growth fund and capital appreciation fund, and finally, um, international funds. So as an investor, what would your um, risk allocation or best risk allocation strategy be? So for investors, you should have a money market fund at the minimum because that will help you uh, be able to invest in your short-term funds, your emergency fund or your savings for short-term goal. Um, you can either have a long-term or intermediate-term fund. So again, here you can use either treasuries directly, provided that you have sufficient capital and the interest to manage them, or you can use a treasury index fund. And then you can use a stock index fund. And so between those three, you would have sufficient tools for you to create a well diversified uh, and balanced portfolio. Now that you know the risk return trade off of mutual fund, let's take a look at taxes. Tax and mutual funds are a little bit more complicated than stocks and bonds, surprisingly. The reason is because um, with mutual fund, the uh, the, the funds are being managed by a professional manager. So when you receive dividend, you, you do not personally receive the dividends. The dividends are paid to the mutual fund, but they are passed through to you. So you have to um, pay tax on the dividend. So it's, it can be a little bit um, jarring when you receive the tax statement at the end of the year and say, I did not receive any cash dividend but I am responsible for the tax on the dividend. That is because the dividend was paid to the mutual fund and is added to your return on the mutual fund. So it's not that you don't get the dividend, you do have the dividend, but the dividend was paid to the fund and the fund manager will reinvest the dividend on your behalf. So you, uh, and that will increase your future return. However, you have to pay tax on the dividend that was distributed to the fund in the current year. So uh, dividend distribution, this will be uh, any income that is received by the, by the fund, which will include dividends or coupon. Uh, most funds will allow you to choose either receive this as cash or invest in the fund. And most, um, if this is a long-term investment, you will probably reinvest it. Um, however, you have to pay tax on it, whether or not you receive them or you reinvest them. And then there's also capital gain or losses. So even if you do not sell the fund, the manager of the fund may buy and sell stocks on your behalf. When they buy stocks or bonds on your behalf, meaning they buy and stocks for the mutual fund, they will realize these taxes and you are responsible for that. So even if you don't sell the fund, you're still responsible for the capital gains tax that is realized 
by the fund manager as they manage the fund on your behalf. So because you have to pay tax on mutual fund distribution, uh, these funds are particularly useful for retirement accounts. So for 1K, IRA, or Roth IRA. Um, again, most companies, their 401k do not allow you to buy individual stocks, but they do allow you to buy mutual funds. You will realize actual capital gain or loss when you sell the mutual fund, and uh, you need to pay tax the tax difference between the price that you buy the fund and the price that you sell the fund for. So this is just your regular uh, capital gains tax. However, it can be tricky if you um, have a regular savings plan. So for example, you save $200 every month and you put that and you buy mutual fund with the $200. So what is your purchase price when you sell a particular share? Um, the government does allow you to use the average cost method. Uh, so most, um, most brokerage firms, they have uh, their system, their computer system will be set up to keep track of that record for you. It's a good idea to keep a set of record for yourself too, um, just so that you don't have to worry about if the bookish firm no longer have your record. Each mutual fund um, has a document called prospectus. Um, this is different from the corporate bylaw, but it is a legal document. So when you buy bonds, you have a bond contract, and you buy into a share of stocks, the company has bylaws that governs the stocks. When you buy mutual fund, the prospectus is the legal document that governs the, how the mutual fund is, uh, uh, will operate. So the legal document is very long, but the summary prospectus uh, is, actually is very useful to look at because it gives you important information about the fund. So what do you need to look for? So first you want to look at investment objective. So whether or not it's an index fund, it's a growth fund, is an income fund, does it, does it, um, and then the investment strategy, whether it's an index fund or an active strategy, a passive uh, strategy. It also tells you whether or not they are allowed to use derivatives such as options and futures. So some funds actually explicitly say they will not engage in option trading. Others will say that they specifically will use options and futures to increase leverage. So that, that is important to look at. Uh, fees and expenses. I think we talked about that many times already. Yes, fees and expenses affects your overall return greatly. Uh, they also will provide information about past performances and investment. Investment means a lot of time they will, they will give you top 10 holding, top 10 or top 20 holdings. So that means the top 20 companies that the company invests in. They also provide resume of the manager. So if you want to get more information about who is managing your money. Another thing that is very important for investors are the minimum investment and also the minimum balance. How you can buy and redeem share. So those are important information to have before you buy into a mutual fund. You can get the prospectus from the, fund can, from the mutual fund company, or if you are buying the fund through a brokerage firm, they should also uh, allow you to have a copy. Let's take a look at an example. This is an actual prospectus from, uh, from a mutual fund. So it, tell, it listed the investment objective. So it says that the fund seeks to track the performance of a benchmark. So this is a, uh, an index fund. Fees and expenses. So it shows you the fees and expenses. So there's no low, so none, no purchase fee, no back end low, no sales charges, redemption fee is zero, uh, account service fee per year, so you charge $20 per year, so that is uh, part of that. And here's their operating expenses, so you see this is, they have a management fee of 0.13%, there's no 12B1 fee, and other expenses is 0.01%, so their total expense ratio is 0.14%. So that's uh, they also give you example of how much uh, the expense will uh, accumulate to 
per year. Uh, they also talk about the investment strategy. So the index that they use is the CRIPS index. Uh, so this is the U.S. total market index. And it says it represents about 100% of the investable stocks in the U.S. stock exchange. So that is a... Uh, a very well diversified index. So it includes everything that is traded on New York Exchange and NASDAQ. And you talk about the risk and they also show you the historic return. So here you can see that when you invest in the stock, uh, in a mutual fund, even though this is a very well diversified um, index fund, you still carry risk. So in some years, your risk, you can return as high as 33%. And some years you can lose 5% or maybe even lose 20%. So there is risk involved when you purchase a mutual fund. So that is some uh, important information that you can expect to see from a prospectus on a mutual fund. So all the things that we talk about, expense ratio, investment strategy, and historic performance, those are all available in the prospectus. So how do we buy and sell mutual funds? The most common uh, avenue for small investors or individual investors is through their invest, uh, retirement plan. Uh, most companies offer mutual fund as an option in their retirement plans. Um, again, most companies do not allow you to buy stocks other than their own stocks. So you, if you want to have a diversified portfolio, you'll need mutual funds. Um, you can definitely purchase mutual funds through a um, brokerage account. Um, so one advantage of using a brokerage account is that you can have all your investment in one place. Um, however, not all mutual funds is available through a particular brokerage. So particularly funds that have no load. You can definitely buy directly from the mutual fund company. For most large mutual fund companies, they also have offer brokerage accounts. So the large companies such as Fidelity, Vanguard, uh, those are some of the largest mutual fund companies in the US. Uh, they both have brokerage accounts in addition to their own mutual funds. So the most important question, what, which mutual fund is right for you? So, to recap, the things you want to focus on is the expense ratio. You want to look for funds that have low expense ratio, but from well-known companies. Uh, index funds uh, usually have the lowest expense ratio. You can buy either index open-end fund or index ETF, ETF exchange traded funds. Uh, they both carry similar characteristics. Um, ETFs tend to have lower tax distribution. So for uh, if you are buying an index fund in your retirement account, an open-end mutual fund may be a better choice. Uh, also, a lot of retirement accounts do not offer ETFs. For your personal non-retirement account, an ETF index fund uh, may be a better option. The other thing to look for is investment objective. So you want money, short-term fund, money market fund for short-term investment, uh, income or balance fund for intermediate goal, or even uh, investing in bonds so you know that the money will be available when you need it. Uh, and then for long-term investment, uh, the best strategy is a bought stock index fund or a target day fund where you don't have to do any rebalancing and um, adjusting. Another very important consideration is your own risk tolerance. Would you be able to sleep at night? Uh, and then there are special considerations. So this is the personal value and personal situation, which is very important for financial planning. So let's take a look at some example. So if your personal value is such that you want to have, uh, you want to help the environment, then a socially responsible index fund will be a good choice for you. Uh, family and personal situation. Again, here we talk about uh, regional fund or foreign fund or international fund may be appropriate uh, if you plan to spend a significant amount of time in another country. So here is a very simple do-it-yourself 
investment strategy to use mutual fund as part of your overall retirement plan and your personal financial plan. The most important thing to remember is to match your own risk tolerance and your life stage with your asset allocation. So for example, when you are early, when you're young uh, and early and uh, early in your career, you can take more risk. So you want to allocate more money to stocks. So for example, you can put 80% of your investment in a stock index fund, 20% in a bond index fund, and then put your emergency saving in money market. As you age, you can decrease your allocation to stocks as you and as you approach retirement. Uh, so you may want to go to a 40, 30, 30. Uh, so 40% growth fund, 30% income stock fund. Um, or you can simply do 70% stock index and then 30% 30, um, 30 bond index. And as, as you, when you reach retirement, then you want to further reduce your risk. So you may want to focus on an income index fund. So there's much easy, much, um, much lower risk. And by the time that you reach retirement, you probably will have some significant savings to buy treasuries on your own. Uh, if you don't, you can use a treasury bond fund, but you can also buy treasury direct, uh, put more money into money market fund. Um, and very important, remember to rebalance. Remember that's one of the most difficult thing to do because we have to stay disciplined in order to uh, be able to rebalance as necessary. We conclude this chapter here and I look forward to seeing you in the next chapter.